everyone. Welcome back into the Wildcat Playbook right here at Beyond the Big Ten. We are the digital platform to go beyond the game all season long for all your college football news. Uh, you can follow us at Beyond the Big Ten. I'm Joey Christopoulos. Follow me at Joey Sports Guy. Big win, homecoming weekend. The Cats move to 3-3. Three and three. They pick up a victory 23-20 to 20 over Howard. So let's bring in uh, my co-host, my man, West End Golf Club's very own, Fox 32, CHGO, former Bears defensive end, former Northwestern standout to talk about it. It's Corey Wooten. What's up, Corey? Oh, what's up, Joey? I'm just glad they got the W right because when I played in 06, right, we lost to New Hampshire, one double A team, and that was oh. embarrassing. So I'm glad they pulled it out, but they made this game a little too close for comfort, right? 23-20 was the final, um, and this is a game they controlled it, you know, especially even even going into the fourth quarter, right? Uh, they, they had a big lead. Um, the kind of game-changing play was that fourth and two or fourth and three when they went for it. Uh, Sullivan scrambled to that right side, got sacked, and that seemed to build, uh, build the momentum for Howard. And after that, they had two consecutive scores. Um, they were really rocking defensively. They were playing well. Um, you know, I think I think Northwestern let, let them in and, and let it too close. But um, Sullivan, I mean, he was up and down, right? Some of the throws he mm-hmm. made, especially the one on the sideline to Cam Johnson, that was an absolute dime. And then Kurtz in the red zone in the first half, right? That That nice little in route. Um, put it right on the money, but at times he's holding the ball too much. And hey, Howard played tough. You got you got to give him their credit. But Sullivan's holding the ball a little bit too long. A guy like Ben Bryant is getting that out, learning how to scramble, learning how to check it down. So that was that was my main um, thing with Sullivan. Right early on, I loved the scramble. Um, he, he showed his ability to use his legs, but you can't hold the ball too long. I think a guy like Ben Bryant would have really torched this this defense. Right there were some some holes that they could have exploited more. But I really liked their effort to, to get the run game going, right? They were they were consistent with their efforts to try to get the run game going. But I want to see a guy like like Hyman get the ball a little bit more, man. He's got some juice in there, right? My guy. There's a couple runs that he had that you're like, man, why are you only getting three carries in that situation, you know? I would like, uh, you know, Tyus looked pretty good in there. But I would like Hyman to get a couple couple more carries because he really is that lightning. Like, he, he once he hits that hole, man, he's quick in there. So I'd like to see that a little bit more and, and – you know, defensively, they got to sure up those run issues, right? We, I talked about it on the pregame. You know, Eden James, man, he's a guy that is an absolute game breaker, right? I told you about the. It's it's always those skill positions, right? That that are up to par with the D one, and he really showcased that. He went for 177, went for eight yards a pop. Like, yeah. come on, Northwest, we got to be better with that, especially against Howard. Like I told you, the the lineman, right? That's the biggest difference between one double A and D one. We got to control the line of scrimmage. We got to be able to tackle, and that's something that we really got exposed at times. And it was it was two really big runs that gutted us, um, but they were consistent with that running game. So got to clean up some of those issues. And there's no reason that Howard should have more sacks in a game than us. So we got we got to get more pressure. Um, got, got to. Yeah. So let's dive right into uh, go a little bit further with our X's and O's segment right here on the Wildcat Playbook. Wildcat Playbook X's and O's segment right here. Yeah, Corey, man, I completely agree with you that um, you know things were looking pretty good for the Wildcats uh, early on there, and maybe you're starting to think maybe in the second half they started asking themselves on homecoming weekend, I don't know, what are we doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? Where are we party. going? What are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because they, they were able to crawl back into it a little bit, and um, I want to go with this one step at a time. You brought up a couple of things that piqued my interest. Um, the first one was, you know, Brendan Sullivan obviously playing for Ben Bryant, um, you know, early on. You know, one of their opening drives, he was able to kind of sneak free on the sideline, maneuver a little bit, find the end zone. It's a bit of the dimension that he brings to the offense. But, but yeah, Corey, I mean, my, my biggest question for you coming into the show was, you know, obviously he doesn't quite have the mobility that I think that you would want for the type of skill set that he wants to put out there on the field. I, he's not the most mobile guy in the world. He does hold on to the football a little bit. So, yeah, my, yeah. my follow-up for you really quick was if you had to pick one, you know, offensive line in this game versus Brendan Sullivan. Are you leaning a little bit more on some of the issues that they had in the second half on Sullivan, more so than maybe an yeah. offensive line? Yeah, because you look at the sacks. Majority of them were on pressures, right, and and holding the ball too long, covered sacks. So mm-hmm. that's something you have to be able to get the ball out. And, and what I've seen from um, Ben Bryant the past two weeks, especially even against Penn State, he was able to check the ball down, get it out, not take as many sacks. Um, so yeah, there's there's no there's no way that Howard should have the same amount of sacks as Penn State. Penn State is way more talented than Howard. So you know, a guy like Sullivan, he's holding the ball too much, and like I said, you got to learn to check it down, throw it out of bounds, scramble to the side, 
you got you got to live to play another down. So sacks will kill you, and especially it's just it's just a, it demoralizes that offense. So he just held the ball too long, and and listen, he doesn't have the same experience as a guy like Ben Bryant. Ben Bryant's been around, you know, fifth year senior. He's had three consecutive years of playing, um, so he has a different element. But I think if Ben Bryant was playing, he would have torched Howard. I, I I really think they would have put forty plus on them because there were some opportunities there. But it's about exploiting those, right? I would have liked some some more screens, some more draws, especially with the pressure that they were given, Joey. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's how you combat that, right? If you have a, either a dominant defensive line or you have a team that's drilling a lot of pressure, right? Screens, draws all day, right? You do, you do that to death because they're getting up the field and then you hit them with that and that, that's where you get the big chunks, the 20, 40 yard. You know, uh, think about a screen with Hyman, man, the juice that he has. Uh, he could take that to the house. So I would have liked a little bit more creativity as far as that goes with the uh, offensive playbook, especially knowing what they were uh, bringing, bringing forth defensively. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned Tyus a little bit earlier. I thought he had a really nice return on special teams too in the game. So, you know, let's be honest. When you're going back and you're saying, how the heck are the Wildcats 3-3? Three and three? You know, I think on this show here, every single week, we keep bringing up different guys that are stepping up and making some plays. And I'm not saying that it's upper echelon talent. Uh, I'm not saying this is an elite offensive unit, Corey. But if you keep looking at this team every single week, look, A.J. Henning's down. But, you know, a guy like, you know, Joseph Hyman, I kind of like that dude a lot. I mean, I think Cam Porter's the unquestioned lead back. I think you're completely correct. You've been on it from the jump, Corey, that that dude needs 15, 16, 17 carries a game. But figuring out a way to get Hyman the football a little bit more um, can be very interesting moving forward. And then Corey, again, you mentioned it a little bit, but you know Bryce Kurtz showed up, Bryce Kurtz showed up once again, and and honestly, it's turning into old faithful on a week to week basis. Cam Johnson continues to make plays. He found the end zone this weekend, and I think he's on a streak right now. I think it's maybe three or four games. I could be wrong where he has at least a twenty to twenty five yard plus reception in the game. Look, man. All of a sudden, there's a lot. There's there's some options to choose from for this team moving forward. And if Ben Bryant can get healthy after the bye, um, you know, there's no reason why they can't continue to stay in games and possibly win games. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more because I, I think they're a team that like they make plays when they need to, right? They they're not like consistent throughout the whole game. It's it's but, an execution late, moment thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex- exactly. Since since that Minnesota game, and especially early on in the Penn State game, to be able to hold them to 10 points in that first half and, and be up at one point in time, 10 to three in that, in that first half of that Penn state game It's they make chunk plays. But I think what they need to do is consistently rely on that running game because they have some talented backs in there. And I think it'll take pressure off, especially with some of these talented defenses in the big mm-hmm. 10, there's always great defensive linemen, linebackers. So you really, you really got to um, take the pressure off the quarterback, right? Screens, draws, get the running game going. But like I said, Hyman, He's a game breaker, Joey. There's no reason why he should only have three carries, right? I want to see more screens, more draws with him, some more design plays, kind of like how they were going after Henning, right? They were trying to get him consistent uh, targets because Hyman is a guy that can be a game breaker, Joey. That one run he had uh, going up the sideline, man, he has a different juice, juice. than a lot yeah. of, a lot of uh, running backs out there, right? You know, when you look at um, Cam Porter, right, he – He's got quickness, but he's more of a downhill guy. So you got thunder and lightning with those two, and I think that would be a good pairing. And think about the quarterback, right? It just takes pressure off him. So then, when you work the play action, you got Johnson. You know, when Henning comes back, right? He can be the he can be the uh, long hitter. And then all of a sudden, you got Kurtz too. That's like you said, old faithful. So then you have some options over there, right? And we talked about going three and three. And before before the season, what was it? Over or under two and a half. That that I yep. think the betting was was saying right and they're already at three right last year they had one win opening opening game of the season against nebraska and after that no more wins so this is an opportunity you know three and three right now way better than you started you got three more wins to be bowl eligible especially with everything that happened this off season, right with with all the scandal your head coach getting fired that had been there 17 years to be able to to make a bowl in a in a in a, in a season if everything that happened that would be incredible, right? And I think that just shows the resilience of these guys, especially in that Minnesota game, right? Talking about that, being down 31 to 10. I mean, mm-hmm. that is that is some gojones to be able to come back, yeah. grit, Ben Bryan in there. So I think that just shows a lot about these guys um, to be able to come back from that situation. And even, even in a game against Howard, right, where it's looking like they have it, to be able to close it out, right? 
because a lot of times when the momentum goes the other way, it's really hard to get that back because they were having trouble stopping that offense. And, and when they needed to, they made a play, secured the game, and got the win. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the win was pretty or not. It matters at the W at the end of it. And they're 3-3 three and three at this point. Going into Nebraska that we talked about is a very winnable game. Nebraska's been up and down, right? They're not like Nebraska, you know, back in the early 2000s, 99. They're, they're, they're a team that's <laughs> middle of the pack at this point. So this is a very winnable game for Northwestern. Hopefully going into this bye week, Ben Bryan gets healthy, Henning gets healthy. And all of a sudden, they have the full arsenal going into Nebraska. Yeah, and Corey, uh, you know, you're hitting it right on the head. I mean, I, th- I think sometimes in college football, right, I think style points do matter, especially in victories. But for this Northwestern team, for this current group of players right now, I think a dub is a dub. And I think that's the most important thing right now. And, I, and you're right, man. They've already hit the over on the season. They're sitting at 3-3 three and three right now. They're right in the middle of the Big Ten West. Um, you know, fighting for, for a legitimate spot in it right now. So we're heading into the bye week right now, uh, which means we're going to head on over. We're going to do a quick little version of our scouting report. Doing scouting report right here on Wildcat Playbook. I'm here with former Bears defensive end and former Wildcat standout Corey Wooten. Um, you know, Corey, um, you know, we've done a lot of shows together. And you've talked about this before. So I want to bring this up right now because mm-hmm. I want you to take us inside the locker room of this Wildcat team. Um, they're 3-3. Three and three. They're heading into a bye week. I get it. Their quarterback has to get healthy. Um, And you know what? A.J. Henning has to get healthy, too, as well. And there's a lot of areas of concern on this team. But, Corey, man, I've heard you talk about this a lot before, about the concept of belief. And and when you're talking about – you've talked about resiliency with this Wildcats team. I want you to talk about what you think is going on in this locker room right now, a 3-3 and Wildcats team. Everyone counted them out. Most people thought, including us, the way that they started the season, we were asking ourselves, gosh, are they going to get a win this season? Exactly. So they're at 3-3 three and three right now. I just want you to talk a little bit about the belief that's going on in this Wildcats locker room right now and moving forward. I think they're just rallying around each other, you know, despite everything that went on. I think that Minnesota game, I always go back to that because that's very telling. I think that tells the mark of your team, right? Coming back from a situation like that, mo- most people, they get on the sideline and say, oh, we suck. You know, let's 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 get on to the next week, and um, it's it's hard not to do that. So the fact that they fought back, right? They got consecutive stops when they were really struggling stopping that Minnesota rushing attack, and to be able to get the ball back, and Ben Bryant standing in there, pressure in his face, taking hits, stepping up in the pocket, being being able to lead consecutive scoring drives, and end up tying it up getting it to overtime, um, you know, stop it, holding them to a field goal, and then that awesome throwback play, the, you know. Great call. Um, yeah. Throwback. Oh, un- unbelievable to ice the game. I, j- I just think, like, that that meant everything to the team, everything they went through, right, for the ups and the downs, everyone's saying how they're, they're the joke of college football, everything that went on with the scandal, right, they can't win games, all this. To be able to come back in that situation, I think that just reinvigorated that locker room. And since that point on, right, they came out against Penn State and played hard. Say, and we, we talked about that. And being 10-10, 10, 10, yeah. 10, 10 in the second quarter, that means something too, Corey, right, to this locker room, exactly, what they're trying to build exactly. right now. We, yeah. And we talked about that with Brock on the podcast when we broke down the Minnesota game, right? This is going to give them the confidence going into Penn State, and that, that really did, right? There was a couple bad breaks in the second half, but they played pretty hard. And think about it. Penn State beat the brakes off Iowa, man. They held them to 72 yards of total offense. So Northwestern went above what everyone thought they would. They fought hard. And, hey, when you're in a game close like that, you have to keep it close, right? you got to rely on the run game, and especially against a very talented team like Penn State. That's what they're going to have to do going forward, right? When they get it in Nebraska, like you got some talented running backs. Rely on them, right? Your offensive line isn't the strength of the team. So take the pressure off them, Joey. It's like the same thing that we talk about with the Bears, right? With Justin Fields. Let's run the football. Let's be a running team. Work the play action off it. Look what the Bears have done the past two weeks. Northwestern can learn something from that, right? Get the run game going. And then all of a sudden, it's going to work that play action. Hopefully, when Henning comes back, He's the home run hitter. You got Cam Johnson, Kurtz. You have some options. So looking at it before the season, we kind of didn't know how things would unfold. But now what we're seeing is some weapons, right? We got Kurtz. We got Henning. Uh, Johnson's very reliable. And then the running back room, Cam Porter, Hyman, right? Uh, they, they, there's some hitters right there. So really be able to utilize that. But I think it starts with the running game, take the pressure off the offensive line. I think they could do that, Joey. They could win a big game at Nebraska. 
and just keep rallying around each other, right? Use this time to get rested up. But the problem is, Joey, sometimes after bye weeks, right? People get a little complacent. They're resting too much. You know, maybe they don't come in in the same shape. A week off could could really hurt a team, right? So I'm hoping Braun and company really have a good game plan, right? Have them take a couple of days off and then get back to it, right? Get back to some practices. You know, the people that need to rest up and, and get healthy do that. But you got to stay consistent with it because what we've seen, you know, the past two weeks, they're starting very fast. And that's what you want to continue mm-hmm. doing, especially going into Nebraska. Yeah, it's all about building on it right now. Now, the bye week works in your favor because you got to get a little healthy, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But, man, you're bringing up a great point that uh, maybe it isn't coming at a great time where this team should keep pushing right now, keep refining, get, getting better at the details, um, and keep finding some of these pieces that you know are putting up points right now for the Wildcats. So, so Corey, man, here it is. Here's the big one, baby. Uh, we're 3-3. Three and three. No one saw it coming. We're heading into a bye week. And here's what we got left. Of course, we're going to come back next week and preview uh, their matchup at Nebraska. Tough matchup, Corey, right? But still, yep. what's left on the slate here? Maryland, Iowa, Wisconsin, Purdue, Illinois. You teased it before. They got to get yep. at least three wins to probably be bowl eligible this season. So my question for you is, as it stands right now, are you believing in the Cats? Can they get there? Can they get to six? Yeah. And which ones do you think those could possibly be? Yep. I think they can. So, so I, I think Nebraska that could be a for sure win uh, for them. Because so I think I think this plays into the matchup well. Um, hopefully, Ben Bryant's back at this point. You know, they really rely on that run game. Get some of those weapons, some options. Um, Maryland, they are they are a very dynamic team. Um, I think I, I have that one as an L, um, just because they got a lot of playmakers. Right. Um, sometimes they're. Their wins and losses aren't always there, but look how they played Ohio State this past weekend. I know it got out of hand towards the end of the game, but through three quarters, I mean, this game was pretty tight, and and they showcased all the weapons that they had. Iowa, I'm 50-50 on that one because you already know I've talked about this. Northwestern-Iowa, that's like the unwritten rivalry right there, right? That's a game that Northwestern always gets up for, Iowa gets up for, so I can go either way. So that one I'm, I'm not completely sold on. Wisconsin, I have that as a loss. Um, I think Wisconsin's a little more talented. Um, their you know, running game, possible, their running game versus our run, yeah, running game versus their run yeah. defense. I, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. E- exactly. So I have that as a loss, and then uh, next, the next week after that, Purdue. That's a very winnable game. Um, I, I, I have them as winning that, and then Illinois. Right, they've been up and down. I have that as a win too. So I think the for sure wins that they can get are Nebraska, Purdue, and Illinois, and I think the one that they got a chance is Iowa. So they could potentially get four with the Iowa game just because of that rivalry. And I think guys really get up for that game. Um, so it'd be, it'd be huge. If they could get four wins, Joey, at that point and win seven games this season um, with everything, even, even winning six games, right? That would be a huge accomplishment to you know go from one win last season to six or seven this year, make a bowl. Um, and then if they could win a bowl, that would be even huge. Uh, and it would help out with the recruiting, right? Because I know there's been a lot of – commits that have decommitted because of everything that went mm. went on and they're like oh northwestern is trash now all this but it really shows that hey you know fitz was a huge part of this program right but all of a sudden they're rallying around each other they have some talent they're playing together and this is a school i still want to go to because i want to get a great education i want to play in the big 10 and i want to play for a team that that really rallies around each other so i think that would be huge for the recruiting if they can make a bowl and uh, maybe even win one so that that would just be huge so so going into this bye week get healthy work work on work on the running game i think that's what's going to take them to the promised land defensively really got to stop the run right because you, you look at some of these opponents right especially when you get into iowa you get into um, wisconsin right they're going to ground and pound you to death and, and a team like iowa or, or wisconsin they'll rush for 300 on you, especially wisconsin so you really got to shore up those running issues because think about it howard their offensive linemen are a lot smaller than Wisconsin or Iowa, right? Those are some of the best offensive linemen in all of college football, right? Road graders, corn-fed farm boys that, that, that <laughs> have been picking up uh, bales of hay, you know, working on a farm their whole life. I mean, they don't play, man. I, I remember going against those guys. So Northwestern ha- really has to prove improve on that defensively and, and dial up the blitz, right? Mueller was huge in there with the two sacks in the game. Get more of that going, right? the front four hasn't generated as much pressure as you want. So if they can do that going into these next couple weeks, 
Um, I, I think they can make a bowl for sure. I, I think they can make a strong push, and it would be huge for the program, especially with an interim head coach. His first year here at Northwestern be huge for the program. Against Iowa, point total, if I gave you a point total for the two teams at 18.5, Am I being too cheeky? Is that <laughs> is that a, is that an over or is that? Are you talking about dude, combined score? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iowa Northwestern, man. I mean, I think we we've seen some like what we've seen some nine sixes, right? We've seen some ten oh, yeah. sevens. Ten, we've seen ten, some ten, thirteen, seven, thirteen seven. You know, right? Stuff like that. Yeah. So it's it's usually not high scoring games because you look at Iowa, right? They're not a dynamic offense, right? What they what they do really well is they run the football, they play good defense, they play good rush defense, mm -hmm. they're able to heat you up, you know, with, with their zone blitzes. So they keep games tight, right? And then offensively, they never really have have a forty point, you know, uh game. They're not that type, right? They're they're the the uh seventeen to twenty four. That's in their window, right? And if they're really doing good, it's maybe because of a defensive score. So that, I agree with you. That could be a really tight one where you see both teams, at, uh, you know, 10-10 coming into the fourth quarter or something like that because regardless of, of the records and how everything goes, we've always played Iowa well, Northwestern. And I think, yeah. you know, it, it is the unwritten rivalry. Like, I know Illinois is our technical rival, but if you look at the, the past, you know, 15 to 20 years with Iowa and Northwestern, I mean, the record is, is pretty dang close. When I was there, we beat them four to five times. So, um, you know, I was giving my, my buddy uh, Tony Moyaki, the former tight end from Iowa, a hard time. Like, you know, so we used to, we, we, we used to, we, we used to um, you know, bet a steak dinner on, on the game, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, when, when we got in the league and all that, um, you know, and even afterwards. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I ate pretty good for a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was going to say with an Iowa guy, too, as well, that means we're getting at least over under 18-ounce steak here. We're going at least over on that front. Um, if I remember correctly from – the preseason notes, um, I think in the last 12 matchups, I think Iowa and Northwestern are 6-6. Six and six. Now, granted, that was during yep. the Fitz era, but I think that illustrates um, just how close that matchup is, no matter what station the program is at in any particular year, whether one is up or down. Um, those games are always super close. Uh, Corey, let's just get you out of here really quick with a quick little word on campus. Word on campus right here on Wildcat Playbook. Um, you know, Corey, man, I want to keep this open for you. You can talk whatever you want. I mean, my question mm -hmm. for you is, um, I mean, you don't have to, like, pull the curtain back on wild homecoming weekend stories. But look, man, I went to a, I went to a performing arts college, right? Um, so I don't really understand what campus is like uh, for a homecoming weekend. Um, so I don't know, man, if there's anything that catches your mind or uh, any memories of, of back in those days doing that type of stuff for homecoming weekend, um, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I, I would just say homecoming weekend was the best. You know, sometimes your family would come out there, uh, watch mm. the game. Uh, you'd have friends come over from from all over to to hang out for the weekend, watch the game, party with you afterwards. So that's why you always wanted to get the dub, right? Don't worry about what you're doing afterwards, right? Secure the win first, and then you can have fun afterwards. So I, I just remember, you know, parties with the guys, having a great time. Um, you know, that's, that, that's, that's what the best – the best part about Northwestern was, was the guys in the locker room, you know, um, the teammates, like, I, I feel like we were one of the closest locker rooms. Um, I went on visits to all different places before I committed to Northwestern. And I'm telling you, there, there was, there wasn't the brotherhood like there was in, in our locker room. Like everybody hung out with everybody. Um, it was, it was generally just a good time, right? We'd be at parties, everybody be kicking it with each other just goofing around having a good time and um that that's something that i always remember the locker room because you know people ask oh you know wh what locker room was better yet yeah, nfl was was cool and all that but there's nothing like a brotherhood at, of college football players right you're usually there for four to five years together in the nfl the guy could be traded next week so i think there there is a different level of camaraderie uh in, in a college locker room and I think that was just evident, right? Like guys generally loved each other. And um, like I, I've said this multiple times, my closest friends to this day that were in my wedding are, are guys from Northwestern um, that I played football with. And that's something I always remember together, like the, the times in the locker room, uh, practices, um, training camp, like the grind of it. The, the guys in the locker room made it that much better, right? The the just guys goofing around. I just remember laughing like crazy, and um, that's something that gets you through the tough times because I don't think people realize 
uh, how challenging it is being a college athlete, right? Because there was a, oh, well, you, you got into Northwestern, you got a degree, all this, but you're putting your body on the line, you're putting your brain on the line. Um, you, some people couldn't take do certain majors because of it, it was a conflicting class schedule, right? So the people mm-hmm. that were engineers and all this, they, 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 they were, they were kind of crap out of luck. So I, I don't think people realize the sacrifice that athletes do and what we put our put our bodies through, what we put our mind through, and it takes a different different type of animal. So you know, when people talk about this, that, and the other, you know, that haven't been in those shoes, that haven't been in the locker room, that haven't played at that level, you know, especially you know, with everything, you, you just you just don't you just don't know what you don't know, right? So yeah. it's it's especially when people are getting paid now for NIL, I'm all for it, right? Because when, <laughs> when I played, you didn't get none of that, right? You couldn't even take a free <laughs> lemonade, kidding. to be honest with you. So, you know, I, I shoot, I, I wish I would have, you know, because I, I could have well, maybe got some endorsement deals from Lou Malnati's or, or Giordano's or something like that, or Portillo's. You know, Chicago's <laughs> a big market, and they, they got a lot, of, a lot of things going on. So I'm all for everything that's going on because I think guys deserve it. I, I really do, yeah. and... and it, this is a shame when sometimes people say, "Well, they get a free education." Nah, that's the, the the schools are making so much money off these guys, Joey, and and even that's, Northwestern, right, for not being yeah. not being a, a a a powerhouse when it, when they talk about college football in, in the spectrum of things, right? But the money that we generate from the TV contracts, from the conference, and all that, right, it helps fund other sports. It makes our university a lot of money, right? And how much did we mm-hmm. see of that? Zero, right? Yeah. Um, a guy like Tyrell Sutton, right? His jersey sales when I was there were unbelievable. You see everybody in the crowd that was wearing jerseys. It was usually a number nineteen. What did he see from that? Nothing at all, right? You, you, you got a you got a good job. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all for these guys getting getting paid. I think it's a great thing. So I'm just hoping going forward that Northwestern can can work out this NIL and be able to get some big players, right? Because you look at Northwestern alum. Whether, whether they play football or not, usually are very successful. Some of the most successful people in the world, some of the wealthiest people in the world went to Northwestern, right? So if they can get mm-hmm. that money together, and it would help for recruiting, right? I don't know if, if Braun's going to be the guy going forward. I guess I guess time will tell. But if they can get a, a, a legit name as a coach, right, um, I think that could be huge. And then you get some NIL money, and then all of a sudden – with the transfer portal as well, right? Next year you can get another quarterback like you got Ben Bryant, a proven guy that wants to wants to play in the Big Ten Conference, right, to, to, to be the guy over there. And all of a sudden it changes up things a little bit because I think if Northwestern wants to take the jump to like where Penn State is um, or, or Michigan, right, because for me – I think I think Ohio State to me is 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 the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, the Big Ten, right? I know I know last mm-hmm. year Michigan beat them in the past, but I think Ohio State usually how they recruit, you know, how they play in big games. Um, if Northwestern wants to be at a level of like a Penn State, they have to get better, you know, with this NIL money, and I think they have to get a big time coach. I think that's going to be the difference maker for Northwestern to take the, the next step to be. Maybe where they were in the early 2000s, right, when Randy Walker was there competing for a Big Ten championship. So I think I think that's what they need to do going forward. And a lot of those, some of those guys were Gary Barnett's guys who recruited really well, right? So I think for Northwestern to take the, the next big step, that would be huge. And especially um, six games this year, be great for recruiting. They can sort out that NIL stuff and then get, get a big-name head coach. I, w- I would love that. Oh, man, and then obviously – you know, you jump, you re jump start the program, and and that's the thing with the NIL portal is um, that it has leveled out the playing field in a lot of different ways, and and there's a lot of different opportunities for. And what I love about it too is that a fifth and sixth string guy on a top a top ranked program that maybe doesn't get a chance to see the field can now easily transfer to a situation where he can showcase his talent. Cough, cough. AJ Henning moving from Michigan over to Northwestern. Um, you know, when you talk about the college stuff, Corey, it just makes me think. Um, you know, you, you, but how can you not be like, just real quick, how can you not be like romantic about it though? Because, like, for one, I can imagine the differences between the NFL and college are uh, in college, you guys are all kind of the same age, right? You know what I mean? There's not the 34 year old with the 22 year old like in the NFL. Um, you know, maybe there's a couple guys in your team that are married, but the rest of you guys are either falling in love or falling out of love. You know what I mean? Like, it's all that, that time in your life, right? When you're, you know, exactly. you're out there doing that. And then, um, 
And then, yeah, man, you guys are all kind of making the same amount of money. So if someone owes you 10 bucks, like it actually really means something. Um, <laughs> you know, we're going to get out of here, Corey, but is, is it funny? Do you, do you, do you, have you thought about the fact that, do you realize that, you know, 20, 25 years from now when you're a grandfather, when someone talks to you, and when you explain to someone 20, 25 years ago from now that you played for free, do you want to like you know what like, I'm saying? What? <laughs> and you're gonna be like, I yeah. did it because I loved it. And they're like, wait, yeah. they didn't pay you at all. They they paid yeah, they paid my education. But you know, it's it's a wild. That's gonna be a wild concept, man. You played it, for it, free. It, you know what I mean? It really is. You know, it's it, it's gonna be. It's gonna seem weird. It's like uh, you know, back in the day when we didn't have really cell phones until. Maybe I didn't have one sure. until high school, right? I used my parents. Well, but how did you get school. around, Corey? Yeah, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, exactly. <laughs> so, like, we didn't, we didn't send text messages. Now everything is texting, right? Calls calls are irrelevant now, right? Unless it's for business purpose. Even then, right? It's email at that point. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to talk anymore. So it's a, it's a different era, just like football <laughs> is becoming. But I, I think it's such a great thing, Joey, because what I think at the end of it, it'll 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 allow players to develop right like you look at some of these quarterbacks that come into the nfl um and sometimes they're not necessarily ready but they're like hey i am the top two top three quarterbacks i'm going to be a first rounder even though i got some things i got to work on right but i need to go to the nfl because i can't miss that type of money and risk coming back and getting hurt but the nil deal what it does is you look at a guy like caleb williams right the amount of money he's making this year he could come back for another year and make even more money. And then all of a sudden, between his two, two, two years, he's a multi, multi-millionaire before even going to the NFL. So it doesn't even matter at that point, right? Yep. So I think what it's going to do is allow these guys to stay, still get paid, develop if they need to, and especially for, for college basketball as well. I think that'll be great because uh, college football has always been three years. Uh, college basketball is only one, right? You look at when, when the, some of the best players came out, right, the, the 70s, 80s, 90s, right, they usually stayed for three to four years, most of them four years, right? So you got yeah. these NBA players that were able to develop their talent and their skill and then go into the NBA ready day one, not, nothing they needed to really work on, right, because they were already NBA ready. So I think this could be a really great thing for, for sports as well. It'll give a better product. Fans will enjoy it, right, because it's, it's better watch quality for them. So I think in the end, this is a great thing for football. It's bringing more money. And, and think about this, right? Not everybody was, was uh, you know, born with a silver spoon, right, where they have parents to be able to fund them and pay for everything. Some people are extremely poor, and this gives them an opportunity to change their wealth in a matter of a year, right? Think about if you're a top player. You can make anywhere from a, a $1 million to $10 million in a season just with NIL mm-hmm. deals, right? There is no limit to that. That can change somebody's life and then let's say they have an injury and they can never play again all of a sudden they secured themselves a a little a a little nest egg for their financial future right that normally you weren't able to do right think about a guy like jason white won the heisman in 05 right never played in the nfl heisman winner right never made any money from any of his college sales right jersey was was uh, all-time seller so think about that right he missed out on potentially making millions of dollars because they wouldn't allow that. So I think this is a game changer. I think it's a great thing. And I'm, I'm so happy for these guys, right? Because it's going to allow a better uh, product out there. It's going to allow for guys to transition to the NFL, NBA a lot better. And allow them to develop. The Wildcats sit at 3-3 three and three as they head into their bye week. All we can do now is just hope that we get a little bit healthier. We keep our eye on the ball. We stay a little focused. And then we come back. We prepare to take down Nebraska in Nebraska in two weeks on October 21st. Thank you so much for tuning into the Wildcat Playbook podcast right here on Beyond the Big Ten. Follow us at Beyond the Big Ten. Um, we have so many great things coming up this month at Beyond the Big Ten. Um, please give us a follow. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Make sure you tell a friend. And even if you're not a fan of the Big Ten or maybe if you're not a fan of the Northwestern Wildcats, we have so much content that I guarantee you we got something for you. So trust me, uh, head on over and check it out. My name is Joey Christopoulos. Follow me at Joey Sports Guy. Uh, Corey Wooten, follow him at Corey Wooten, two O's, two T's. Uh, my man, great to see you. Great pod. Be well, be safe. Please be good to each other, everyone. Corey, take us home. Take us into the bye. Yeah. And happy homecoming. Yeah.
N- another another uh, great pod, great win, great homecoming. I, I know the guys uh, probably had a good time afterwards celebrating, you know, with their families or, the, or their teammates afterwards and some parties and whatnot, you know. Keep, keep it safe, fellas. Um, but, yeah, n- another great week. Um, this is a great opportunity for Northwestern, like we talked about, to get healthy going into this bye week, right, get a guy like Ben Bryant back because there was there was starting to become some connection with them from that Minnesota game. And I think in the Penn State game they really started out strong. So if they can get Ben Bryan back, they can get Henning back, uh, really rely on that running game. I think going into uh, Nebraska, that could be a win. And all of a sudden, four and three sets you up a lot better than going into a Maryland game where this looks like a sure L. All of a sudden, you feel a little bit more confident. You can keep the game tight going into the fourth quarter. This could be a game, you know, going into Maryland that you could sneak out a win where normally no, nobody expected you to win. Then it sets you up all of a sudden with five wins going into uh, Iowa you know, as a team that, that you play pretty well. So I think this game really sets them up. I think this is a must-win game for Northwestern. So I think this is mm-hmm. the most critical game that they played so far. And everyone always says, yeah, the next game is the most critical. But when you look at the numbers, you look at the teams, this game is the most critical. So if they can capitalize on this, get a win in a hostile environment at Nebraska, would be huge for the program. I think if Ben Bryan's playing, he can take them to the next level, rely on that running game. Screens draws, especially against a team like Nebraska, that's going to light you up. They're going to try to heat you up. Um, so get them off balance. A guy like Hyman, allow him some screens and draws. Allow him to get loose. And I think if they can give him some more touches with Porter, it'll take the pressure off the offensive line, the quarterback. So hopefully this week, uh, you know, they rest up, go into Nebraska, get the dub, go four and three, and then all of a sudden everything looks a lot better. But um, yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna gonna rock with you guys. Keep you posted on any up, up and coming news about the program. Ben Bryant, Henning, and uh, look forward to to next podcast with you, Joey. Have a great week. I know you're going to uh, the basketball uh, Big Ten Media Day, so enjoy that. Um, and uh, that that'll be a lot of fun. Chris Collins, I'm coming for you. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Cats, cats, <laughs> cats. Three cats for three wins. We'll see you next week. Let's go, baby.